ask that the Congress declare a state of war between the United States and the Japanese Empire. With the country now at war, every available man was drafted, leaving women to move into the factories and take on other union jobs to help the war effort. Rosie the Riveter came of age in the 40s, and the rank and file of American labor was becoming more diverse. President Roosevelt sent greetings to the delegates. He said, teachers as a group are performing a great service to their country. Children must not be allowed to pay the cost of this war in neglect or serious loss of educational opportunity. Grab your coat and get your hat. Leave your worry on the doorstep. By the end of the war, as the nation was preparing for the return of its young men, Roosevelt signed one of the most important pieces of legislation ever, the GI Bill of 1944. As it was originally written, the bill offered benefits only to returning officers. With the help of the American Federation of Labor, AFT Vice President Selma Borchardt lobbied to have the language changed to allow education benefits for all returning GIs. In 1947, veterans accounted for 49% of college enrollment. But the veterans who returned to their old jobs found that post-war wages had not kept up with inflation. This set off a wave of labor strikes that included over four million auto, steel, utility and packing house workers as well as teachers. <laughs> 